My name is Jeremy Myers, and I'll be presenting today Gracilis Muscle Flap Creation for Urologic Reconstruction, demonstrating the technique we use at University of Utah at the Department of Surgery and the Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health. In the first step of the procedure, the gracilis muscle body is identified in the posterior inner thigh. The pedicle is marked at its likely location, which is 8 to 10 centimeters from the pubic tubercle, and incision and exposure of the muscle is performed. The first muscle that can be felt from anterior to posterior is the tendon of the adductor longus. The next large muscle body that can be palpated posteriorly is the gracilis muscle. Here an incision has been marked along the length of the gracilis. We usually start off with approximately half of the incision. You can see the adductor longus has been marked as well as the vascular pedicle which is 8 to 10 centimeters from the pubic tubercle. The underlying fat is separated down to the fascial layer surrounding the gracilis muscle. Here you can see the fascial layer beginning to be apparent overlying the belly of the muscle. Here's a photograph from another case that shows marking of the vascular pedicle which is pretty consistently between 8 and 10 centimeters although variations on the vasculature do exist for the gracilis muscle. In the next steps of the procedure the minor pedicles coming in from the superior portion of the muscle are clipped along its length up to the major vascular pedicle. The muscle is detached from its uh, tendinous attachment to the inner aspect of the knee and then the large vascular pedicle is carefully dissected free. Here the gracilis muscle flap has been completely detached from the underlying musculature and a penrose drain is passed around it to help in detraction. The incision is now carried forward up to the tendinous attachment which will be found at the inner knee. The lower aspect of the muscle can be detached with bovi cautery with impunity as most of the minor pedicles all arise from the superior aspect of the muscle. This is carried forward up to the knee. Here's a photograph of the tendinous attachment at the uh, inner aspect of the knee. The tendinous attachments are now detached with bovi cautery. When these attachments have been detached, the muscle will peel backward towards the superior based minor pedicles. A stay suture aids in detraction of the muscle and will help in passage of the muscle underneath the skin bridge in the groin. Minor pedicles are identified, distal to the main pedicle, and clipped and divided sharply. Bovi cautery can travel along this minor pedicle and destroy the longitudinal blood flow throughout the muscle. This is an important step. Here's a picture from a previous case showing the Doppler ultrasound being used to localize the pedicle to the gracilis flap. This arises underneath the adductor longus and is a large pedicle supplying the majority of the longitudinal blood supply through the gracilis. Tissue surrounding the pedicle needs to be carefully dissected free. Freeing up the pedicle underneath the adductor longus will give you the most length for applications of the gracilis deep in the perineum. A adsen type bipolar is very helpful here to prevent jumping of the muscle and damage to the pedicle. Here you can see the vascular pedicle being dissected free using the bipolar type adsen forceps. The vascular pedicle has been dissected underneath the adductor longus to reach the greatest length for the gracilis muscle flap in the perineum. Here the Doppler confirms good vascular flow. The next step of the procedure involves creation of a tunnel for passage of the muscle into the perineum. 
placement of a suction vein, and closure of the incision in the leg. A blunt window is created underneath the remaining skin between the vascular pedicle and the perineal incision for passage of the crucillus muscle flap. A Penrose drain can aid in detraction of this tunnel for passage of the muscle. A large vascular clamp is now used past the gracilis muscle flap into the perineum. You can see that dissection of the vascular pedicle allows a bit more length of the gracilis for application in the perineum. This is a typical radiated stricture which will be wrapped with the gracilis muscle flap to help seal and bring in fresh blood supply, hoping to aid in the success of the operation. The incision in the leg is now closed. Usually three layers are used to close the fascia overlying the gracilis muscle flap, a subdermal closure with a foro vicral, and closure of the skin with a subcuticular stitch. A light compressive dressing will be used consisting of a ace bandage. As you can see, harvest of the gracilis muscle flap is very simple after having some short experience with the procedure. It's reliable, the vascular pedicles are usually very consistent, and it can aid in the success of perineal operations, especially after radiotherapy or with very complex groin and genitourinary infections. This has been a presentation from the University of Utah Center for Reconstructive Urology and Men's Health, and I hope that it helps. Thanks.